Aloha, our keto protein sparing modified fast friends, carnivore friends. We are very excited to be here. And remember, if you share this video on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and tag us, you could win our protein sparing modified fast cookbook, what everybody really loves. And this week's winner is on Twitter, Keto Meal Mama. So Keto Meal Mama on Twitter. Follow her, check her out, and message us because you just won the book. And speaking of books, this came this week, Sugar Free Kids Cookbook. So if you want to know how we keep our family sugar free and keto, our kids are keto kids. This book is really, really cool. We did a whole video on what's inside of it, including Halle Berry's Sweet Forward. Very, very sweet, but we just made um, pizza eggs from the breakfast, which is dairy free, gluten free, sugar free. And my son loves them. He just made them himself. I took a picture of them. Super, super easy, delicious. Even if you're not a kid, I think you're going to love these recipes. And he wants to make the pop tarts. He even remembered, I said, Micah, could you open it up to the page where the pop tarts are on? And he said, it's page 158 or something like that. And I was like, you even remembered the page? Because he's that excited. I, I lost the page. It's not 158. It is. Oh, and look it. If you remember Crunchberry cereal, I have Crunchberry cereal for you. So check it out. Sugar Free Kids. We're doing a book signing in um, St. Paul, Minnesota, if you're in St. Paul, Minnesota next week. So we're, we're going to get to questions now that Craig's ready. All right. Do you want to talk about the, <clears throat> the points or whatever? What? <laughs> Never mind. What causes muscle loss? Uh, not eating enough protein. Not Number one, not eating enough protein. Uh, number two, not having enough activity. If you're not absorbing nutrients, so even if you're eating enough protein but you have a damaged gut, that would cause some muscle loss too. Um, but the super stickers you talk about. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, Guess what's this month, this week? We will not have a meeting next week, be, our YouTube Live next week, because it's our 20th wedding anniversary on thursday i think so on thursday it's her 20th wedding anniversary yep and uh so if uh but what maria was mentioning is super stickers super chats we very much appreciate any of those so thank you for your support uh for those but so that's about muscle um, loss kelly make sure that you're absorbing nutrients so hypoglycemic event for a five-year-old uh first of all is are, are they diabetic are they type one uh because I'm not sure why you'd be checking blood sugar on a five-year-old, but unless they're actually diabetic. Well, um, what goes up must come down. So yeah, if you're so doing a lot of sugar. You can get a crash due to real high spike in, uh, from eating a bunch of sugar. Focus on protein That's with kids. Probably, I mean, protein is super important, especially, and if they're diabetic, type 1, it's even more important to get protein. Um, so I do that. bone broth as a soup base or just an exchange for morning coffee. Is this okay? Well, it's going to break your fast. Yeah. But you if, know, if, if depends you just on, like to drink it, depends on why. Yeah. I mean, if you it's have, fine in general, but I mean, I usually use, you know, bone broth for recipes, not just sitting and drinking it, but, but you know, Aloha, Lisa, Lisa is one of my recipe testers. She memorized the cleanse pudding as page 186. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're yeah. so sweet. Best advice for starting protein sparing. Also, what does protein sparing mean? LOL. Well, it means that you're sparing your body from losing protein and lean mass. You're focusing on protein. You're lowering the fat and carbohydrates. So on, you only lose body fat, but you don't lose muscle. It's a terrible name. I actually, 15, pure years, protein ago, days. 15 years ago, I called it pure protein days. And um, I'm actually, I just finished another protein sparing book and we're going to call it Pure Protein Days. So. Um, awesome. Oh, thank you. $15. <clears throat> thank you, Kari. I adore you. What do you know about the estrogenic effects of natural sweeteners or on liver as causing my fatty liver? I'm hesitant about giving my daughter lots of stevia and other sweeteners. Now, Kari, thank you very much. And honestly, if you use the approved sweeteners that we allow, it will not cause liver damage, like a pure stevia that doesn't have any additives to it. Something like um, Boca Sweet, 
that is all divulged to the liver, causing fatty liver. Um, that would be anything fructose based um, yeah. or anything that is, you know, metabolized in the liver, which Boca Street on their website claims that it is metabolized in the liver. And uh, estrogenic effects, the sweeteners that we recommend, there's no estrogenic effects there. No. So nothing to worry about. There's a good post. I'll, I'll put a link below of, of all, our guide to natural sweeteners. Yep. Thank you, Kari. What's a good four to one ratio of magnesium to calcium for osteoporosis? What is a good ratio? So four to one is a good ratio for magnesium to calcium for yeah. osteoporosis. If you're looking for foods, it's going to be, you're going to need a magnesium supplement because we used to find magnesium in our water supply and we just don't anymore. Just like farmers need to rotate their crops because the crops suck all the nutrients out of the soil. Our soil is completely depleted of magnesium. We live in a well way out in the country and we've had our well tested. You have to, to adopt children. And it's basically devoid of magnesium. And most people are drinking bottled water or filtered water anyway. And so doing a good quality magnesium is very important to bone health. But I would say that something that's even more important to bone health is vitamin K2. That helps get calcium into the bones where you want it to be. Um, we'll do, can we do the whole post on uh, bone health on, yep. in the show notes? So yeah, we'll do the whole show notes um, it, you know, about the osteoporosis, how to prevent osteoporosis. Because my great grandmother, when she was 95 years old, fell all the way down the steps onto a concrete floor and she didn't even break a bone. Why? Because she ate saturated fat, which your bones are made up of saturated fat. So if you're focused on you know, right kinds of fats, the right kinds of fat, protein, protein is super important, super important. Oh, yeah, we the matrix that. of the bone is, the sheath of is your bones, yeah. and the sheath are made from protein. So protein is super important. Do you recommend uh, any tea brands? Lacey, I would focus on organic because the leaves are what are sprayed. And so any non-organic tea should be highly avoided because when you're eating the leaves, drinking the, the soaked leaves, um, stay away from them. Black tea, I don't recommend because it's going to have a lot of oxalates in it. So, Do you really have to give up all pickles, olives, and yogurt to calm your histamine intolerance? Ah, uh, sorry. Yes, yeah. but there's other ways to calm the histamine response. I help clients do that all the time. There's different supplements that can help heal the histamine intolerance over time. So maybe you can have that. I'll you might want to do... a. I, you might try, I have a refrigerator pickle recipe. Um, yeah, I don't know. No, that's not going to work either. Do we use doTERRA products? Yeah, we use some. We use. Uh, we don't use oils in a therapeutic standpoint. Just like standpoint. the smell. We, we just use it to as an, like an air freshener. Ah, I will say, if I have acne, I'll use the, uh, yeah. the Melaleuca or whatever, yeah. whatever it's called. But we do like their washing detergent. Yes. Yeah, and their toothpaste. Laundry soap. Do you recommend a day of fasting or a uh, protein sparing modified fast to heal from a night of too much partying? I would never fast, do a water fast, because what happens is when you drink, Chrissy, your testosterone levels drop, even in men, and your estrogen levels go 300% higher than what they should be, okay? This is why men with big beer bellies, it's called an estrogen belly. So what happens is you're drinking a lot, your testosterone's crash, your estrogen's high, and then you fast, you're going to lose so much muscle. Yeah, so not, not I would not do that. I would focus on protein. Lots of protein. And protein sparing would be okay. but Write down how you, crappy you feel right now so yeah. you don't do it again. Yeah, that, that, that's the biggest thing. Uh, and I'll put a link below to uh, a fasting post that talks about all the different types of fasting, including protein sparing modified fast, if you yeah. want to learn more about that. All the different ones and their benefits, downsides. Starting a two week protein sparing, three days a week on Monday. Excited. Awesome. awesome. Way to go. Let us know how it goes. There's Micah. Say hi, Micah. Yeah. <laughs> Bella, get out of my water. Bella is uh, sneaking in. Ugh. So let's see. Uh, why do you recommend no dairy? It is higher fat calories. Uh, is it the higher fat calories? Wondering if zero fat Greek yogurt is okay. Is dairy in inflammatory? Yep. Uh, so yeah, I mean, dairy tends it's to a, be inflammatory for most people. It's, it's one of the most common allergens. And more common than uh, gluten allergen. You know, and people don't want to admit it, you know, that it's, it causes them issues. And so a lot of people like dairy, so that's hard. For there's, them to a, cut out. there's a funny person on Twitter that, because I cut out dairy and nuts for maximum weight loss 
effects. Best results. For best results. And someone's like, damn it, Maria, you're right. Like, cause they keep losing weight when they keep the dairy out. And that's even butter and ghee. I, I recommend if you really want this bad, cut it out. I had to cut it out in order to lose weight, but now I have it back and it's just fine. So um, as long as you're sticking to your macros, which it is hard when you're eating fat or I mean a lot of uh, dairy. So fat macro is always in low, like protein sparing low. Is that bad? Uh, day after day after day, um, depending on where you're starting at, you know, if you're a hundred pounds overweight, it might be okay. I would still throw in because that's pretty low calorie, uh, unless you're eating a lot of protein. Uh, you're you're going to want to throw in an overfeeding day to keep the metabolism honest. And it's really hard uh, to keep like one day a week. fat that low, even if I mean, you're doing takes, eggs. Eggs are one to one. Um, you know, yeah, depending you, on what. So protein states. sparing is usually like a three to one protein to fat. So you get three grams of protein for every gram of fat, and mm -hmm. the foods, the whole foods that get you there, are not easy. I mean, it's 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 shrimp and it's fish very very and low. Uh, low fat protein and no so. sauce, you know, sauces are hard. Thank you, Susan. She said happy anniversary. Oh, uh, thank you. And Shay said, I listened to the keto one oh one and your YouTubes, um, from back then drive um, from my out of town, uh, work. I learned, learned so, so much, much from them. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Shay. That makes her, yeah, I try to put in good videos into those one oh ones. Uh, a lot of happy anniversaries. That's the happy thank anniversaries. You. Thank you, everyone. Here's, years. here's another uh, super, super chat. Sh thank you. Oh my you. gosh, $100? That's our, uh, no, it's not. It's ARF. It's, oh my gosh. It's a different country. Uh, how okay. can extreme <laughs> sensitivity to cold be improved? What so, should we investigate? Um, being able to handle very hot temperatures and very cold temperatures says a lot about your immune system. And you can help that with cold therapy and uh, circulation. So if you're always cold, it, it could be a lot with your circulation. Adding something like niacin can help with circulation, but be careful. There's only one that we recommend. It's a very low dose, so you don't get this terrible niacin flush. But I would uh, start doing cold therapy. And that's, you could start by dunking just your face in ice cold water um, or get like a big bucket and fill it with ice cold water and like slowly put your feet in there, work up to your knees, and now I have an ice cold bathtub. So, and that's going to help with your circulation. And you'll notice if you do a cold shower or cold therapy in the morning, you're much warmer throughout the day. So I like this one. Uh, I went, I want to say thank you. I've been following your program since September. And this is the first time in my 64 years that I have my eating under control. Thank you, Amy. That I'm is so, proud so of awesome you. to hear. Thank you. Uh, what about excess? Facial hair. It's usually women. a sign of PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome or high androgens. High so men and women we want androgens, but too much is going to cause um, you know just too much androgens, and it's not good. And it could be dark facial hair, it could be hormonal acne. Um, and what you want to do with that is uh, there's certain supplements I recommend. You could do a personal size supplement plan, um, but excess androgens are caused by too much caffeine, sugar and carbohydrates. So cutting those is very, very helpful. Protein sparing diet good for balancing hormones. Kind of depends on where your state is. I mean, if it's PCOS that's causing your, yeah. uh, you know, hormonal imbalance, absolutely like protein sparing. Reasons. Yeah, it would be, would be a great But it option. just depends on what your hormone issue is. Yep. Um, success on keto hampered by the loss of a thyroid? No, mm -mm. No, nope. uh, I have so many clients that have thyroidectomies and thyroid, you know, removed. You still have, it's kind of like getting gum off the bottom of a shoe. Um, you're still going to have some residue, but um, no, if you do it properly, you're going to do really, really great. But yeah, I would say most people do feel terrible. And it primarily comes to getting cr proper macros. And cutting out the right foods. And guess what? So yeah, it, you've been researching keto and lifestyle. Do you have to begin by counting macros? Seems overwhelming. Yes. We do it for you. But our books all have meal plans and everything, so you don't have to count anything. Just follow the meal plans. And if you But uh in general, yeah, I mean the first at least the first month, I would say, when you start out, it's really good to count macros so you know what you're eating. I don't think vast majority of people really don't have any concept of how many calories, how much protein they're eating, how many carbs they're eating. So it at least sets you, okay. This is what I can eat. You know, right. these are the kind of foods Most I can eat. Most people under eat protein. Hey, Vic. Nice to see you here. Uh, two to three days of protein sparing is awesome. Yeah. There and that's the go, thing Vic. that's really cool about it is 
a lot of people that feel better. They, they feel energy. better on the protein sparing days. Their energy goes up, everything. Another super sticker. Thank Yay. you. Is it important to supplement selenium in what quantity? So I usually, the people that must do selenium are women who are pregnant. Because when you're pregnant, your immune system starts to circulate to protect the fetus. Because it's like a foreign object, right? But when you have, when you give birth, the immune system usually circulates and stays high. And that's when uh, women often suffer from Hashimoto's after they give birth or some sort of autoimmune disease because their immune system doesn't know how to calm down. Now, adding in 200 micrograms of selenium every single day is not only very safe, but very healthy, especially for pregnant women. <laughs> but, you know, selenium, you're going to get it in quite a bit of foods, but, uh, well, no, that's not true. So, yeah, 200 micrograms of selenium is a good. Yeah, I think it's not going to be an issue. No. Nope. Uh, and if you get thyroid issues too, that would probably be a good idea. Uh, I have been extremely irregular about the diarrhea. Yeah. Um, maybe try digestive enzymes and HCL make sure you're properly digesting. There's something called Spectrozyme Panax food. that does really regular for that. And also, um, cut out the dairy cause that can happen too. Y yeah. If you're sensitive to it and you're eating it. Uh, grab another one here. Almond milk and oxalates. Is it a concern? Well, almond milk is basically water soaked in almonds. If you're getting like the, the brands that we recommend, um, it's, there's really no almonds most of the, up in there. Most of the oxalates stay like in the pulp and you know, as that's removed, there probably is some, know, some oxalates, but I don't think almond milk is something you should be drinking every day. Like a, a big tall glass of like milk, you, you know, could traditionally use unsweetened coconut milk that comes in the carton instead if that that would be an option um let's see yes cut the dairy <laughs> uh i went keto meat only carnivore and lost 13 pounds in 30 days and i was not large to start oh, with autumn thanks autumn Great job. oh uh, do you have a mr super sticker up one i already did that one uh extremes oh yeah yeah okay sorry what do you think about using glycine as a sweetener um hmm <sighs> Like I don't mind stevia glycerite, which has some of it in there, but I wouldn't use it exclusively. Uh, let's see. How about osteoporosis? Can't sleep. What do you think of sugar alcohols? There's some that are the only ones we really recommend are erythritol and allulose mm -hmm. because neither of them are digestible. They go right through. Stay you. away from malitol. It'll give you diarrhea. Yeah, the other ones yes, are are problems, bloating. but. Not that one. So Melinda says osteoporosis, can't sleep, anxiety. What can I do for help? Melinda, you must do a personalized health assessment. Listen to Lisa. Lisa said how much she it helped her last week. It's going to help with bone loss. It's going to help with you to sleep and anxiety. It's usually low progesterone, but I'm going to get you on some natural supplements. And um, Craig will have the link for you below, but I really highly suggest that because... It's a complicated issue. It's hard for me. Okay. Oh, this is a nice Been comment. Been following you for years. I have all your cookbooks. Well, thank you, Princess Fiona. I've watched your boys grow, and it's nice to see how your kids grow on this lifestyle. Looking forward to the new cookbook. You're a blessing. Thank you for being here for us. You're a blessing, Princess Fiona. Uh, I'd give you a big old hug if I could. Uh, took 10 grams of slow-release melatonin. Last night, maybe groggy. Yeah, I don't recommend that for sleep. I would do yeah. a personalized health assessment because if you can't fall asleep, then it's a melatonin issue. But if you can't stay asleep, that's not a melatonin issue. It's low progesterone in a woman. And I don't recommend hormones, but I'm going to recommend certain natural supplements that would help you to stay asleep. Uh, this one. Trying to conceive age 43 for the last year after a miscarriage. Am I just too old? Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss, Tanya. That's not easy. I would say no because um, one, our, one of our keto coaches, I won't say her name, um, she didn't think that she could have children, and um, she now has a two-year-old. It's just amazing. So it's, you're not too old. She was, I think, 43. Yeah. Uh, so, Christine, our meal plans – in the book, 700 calories, the calculator shows 1300 for protein sparing day. Mm -hmm. Our calculator would not show 1300 for protein sparing That's day. A regular day. When, when you do the protein sparing macros on our calculator, you get two sets of macros. You get the normal keto days, and then you get the uh, protein sparing days 
uh, that you do two or three, you know, one to three days a week. So uh, you're probably looking at the regular keto ones. Um, so just keto scroll down and you'll get uh, more. I'm not sure. See, is there a particular supplement that would help with me staying asleep um, at night for my wife? She's been keto for six months, but wakes up after a couple of hours and just can't get back to sleep. Honestly, the personal health assessment would help, but Pro, yeah. evening evening primrose oil will help. Uh, the oral one, but um, let's start with that. Let's but it, th there's so many that I could recommend right now, but it depends on so many different issues. And that's why I'm like saying that canned response. Yeah. Cause it's, you, you don't know which ones will work based on your symptoms. Right. So I asked so, a lot of questions on a personal questionnaire, night sweats, same things uh, for my stepmom, progest cream, emu oil. Uh, I would do evening primrose oil instead of emu oil, honey. And then this one, uh, waking up in the middle of the night for a man, borage oil, Borage oil will help, but it's usually low salt. So I would get a salt capsule and take that before bed. Um, is protein sparing the same as low fat carnivore? Uh, also is the protein sparing book contain recipes for the egg yolk, not in the protein sparing book. Uh, there wouldn't be yolks really used. So we have a carnivore ebook that also has protein sparing modified but fast recipes. Protein sparing doesn't have to be carnivore. No, like know. there's, there's, I use onions and garlic for flavor. And I mean, it's definitely prioritizing protein greatly. Mm -hmm. Yep. But uh, it, you know, it gives you options. And for the yolks, this is the thing. If you're separating the whites and the yolks and you have all these yolks in the fridge, this is what you're going to do. Muhammad, you're going to get the Bob Evans, 100% egg whites. It's a green carton or just look for egg whites in a carton that are the ingredients. It's one. 100% egg whites. And then you know what you do? You make scrambled eggs with them. And those are your non-protein sparing days, scrambled eggs. We make them all the time. I actually, for my kids, add extra yolks because staying dairy free, adding those extra yolks tastes like there's creamy cheese in it, you know. Type 1 diabetic and menopause, please advise for blood sugar control and weight loss. I will put a link in the show notes below, or you can just go to our YouTube channel and search insulin. There's a video on insulin resistance and shrinking your fat cells that is excellent. It will answer and all your questions. I would do a personalized health assessment. Uh, this one. I want to try your egg bread recipe, but allulose is banned in Canada. Uh, that's not true because I have a lot of Canadian clients that can get it. Yeah, I think you, you can get it. it. Actually, the one we recommend, if you go to our website they and go to the to shop, shopping list, they, they ship to Canada. Um, but you don't need to use it. I make my pro egg bread the, the protein sparing bread is just two ingredients. It's eggs, egg whites, and egg white protein powder. It's not really protein powder. It's just powdered egg whites, which you can make by yourself. Um, so that's why um, I would I would try that. Planning to join your next coaching session. I think awesome. it starts October 1st. Yep, October 1st to 14th is the next um, sign up. Could you tell me something about its pro progress? How long it takes, et cetera. You, know, you get lifetime access to the program. And it's self-paced, so it's you know whatever how much time you're able to spend on it. I would say the majority of people do complete the program in the thir the the ninety days of included support oh, that come with it. Autumn is on here. She commented earlier. She is one of our certified keto coaches. Uh, let's see. She's, to start for weight loss, which book would you recommend? The Art of Fat Loss. Yeah, and I'll put a link below. We have um, meal plans that Craig did with the Art of Fat Loss and the Cleanse book. On If you go to ketomaria.com, you can find that. Um, so Keto Meal Mama, you won the Protein Sparing Modified Fast Cookbook, so message us, my friend. Yes. Thank you for retweeting. Any tips on minimizing the appearance of varicose veins? I walk every day, and they're not painful. I just don't like how they look. It could be a circulation issue, so I would do some cold therapy. Um, I've seen that help with a lot of people. And I would also add niacin. Um, that would help with a lot. Um, so, and I also know that um, acupuncture can help with that too. Can I build muscle with 10 pound weights and push ups? You can definitely build with body weight, you know, yeah. doing squats, pistol squats, you know, push ups, uh, you don't need any equipment. pull ups. When we are living in Hawaii, all I have are 10 pound weights and I walk with those. And the key is to just do it till close to failure where yep. you can barely, you know, and an ab roller. Let's see. How to Skinny. stay alkaline. Go down one. Let's do this. Okay, okay. Let's talk about this. So the whole idea of 
uh, pH diet is really a myth. I mean, you can, yeah, you can change the pH of your digestive tract. That's the tract that goes through and comes out your urine. And but you know what, a good healthy human stool, has for but it's one point five. The the stomach, stomach acid, but but here's the thing: your blood pH, the blood and the you know every cell Very and, and organ and everything, it's extremely tightly regulated, and you can't change that pH of the blood based on diet. You just don't. It doesn't matter what you eat, your blood pH stays the same. And I'll put a link below. Chris Cresser has a good article on debunking the whole pH. I idea. live in Canada and I can get allulose on Amazon. Yeah. So, so it's not banned my husband is skinny type two, possibly a lot of late uh, onset, basically type one using your way of eating good. all your cookbooks. Thank By the way, you. he's on insulin, very low dose, but he suffers from lows and highs. Can he just stop insulin? Uh, it depends you on work with your doctor. Yeah. You get really watch your levels, um, you know, and, and work with the doctor if you're going to try to wean off. But, you know, it depends, you know, How what far? is, yeah, what is levels look like and what's, what's happening. You know, it's, if you're adding insulin pre-meal and, and that's, and you end up with a low after you may be added too much insulin before the meal, you gotta, it's a, it's a real balancing act with diabetes that especially type one, where you've got to really look at the food he's eating and then and food, including not just carbs, but protein and compensate the right amount of insulin. Join on, there's a private Facebook group called type one grit, type out one, O N E um, type one grit um, and join that group. And they'll be very helpful for you. Rheumatoid and uh, type two diabetic bad combination is keto good for it. Yes. yes I get people going to remission for rheumatoid arthritis and type two diabetes. So uh, I would be honored to help you, my friend. Yeah, you definitely entered something incorrectly. If you got twenty three hundred oh. on a regular day and thirteen hundred on protein sparing day, there was definitely are you something seven wrong. feet tall? Yeah, the only way it would be extremely tall. Someone said, "I love the two ingredient bread. Make it almost every day." Thank you, Susan. You're awesome. Let's see. Should he fast? No, definitely not. If especially no. if he's lean already, mm -hmm. he's got to get his protein in. Focus on muscle. protein. Yep. Uh, what, what about using bacon, bacon grease? grease? Yeah, you could use bacon grease, um, oh, you know, like see. with my dairy-free son, you know, to line the pan for making scrambled eggs. I'll do that. Um, I made mayo with all the bacon leftover grease. What's a normal blood sugar? Uh, we'll see 100, 100 sometimes in the morning. Is this high? So there's something called the dawn phenomena where you cortisol rises to about an hour or two before you wake up to basically help wake you up and get you ready for the day. And when that cortisol rises, it, it tells the liver to put a little uh, glucose in the bloodstream and that'll make your fasting glucose. Uh, we need a power cord like a minute, like real fast. Oh. Uh, we need, uh, it's, is there one right there? And, and they must have it out there. Sorry. We're about to uh, lose our battery. Somebody, or one of our boys uh, stole it, the charger. Um, so, Anyway, you get this uh, low blood sugar or you get blood sugar that's a little higher in the morning because of it, that fasting morning blood glucose. Uh, it's not a problem. It's not, it's, it's normal. And usually when you eat a protein meal, it will actually come down. So if you want, uh, you can eat, move your first meal to the first thing in the morning with some protein in it. And that'll bring that morning blood glucose down a bit but and more would it'll be, be good for the day. That's the insulin. Yeah. Okay. Fix. Crisis averted. Uh, uh, let's see how to avoid and prevent binges. You know what, my friend? Keep it out of the house. Yeah. Nobody needs that. Your kids don't need that. Nobody needs the junk. And feed yourself well. And don't fast. Don't do a full day fasting because that will cause a binge even on healthy things. So, you know, fill your fridge and your freezer with good, healthy things that you enjoy. Um, so and see. supplements can help too. Herschel is 52, six foot two, 240. Um, how much protein? We'll have, a, I'll put a link to our calculator, our, pro, our keto calculator That's below. Um, but generally a uh, good rule of thumb is uh, for men at five feet tall, you need about hundred grams of protein. And then for every inch above that, you need another five grams of protein. So, just calculate based on that. If you're look, just looking for Extreme protein. Extreme leg cramps and foot cramps at night. Peggy, 
I would add in um, magnesium glycinate at bedtime, about 800 milligrams, less if your stools get too loose, as well as 200 uh, milligrams of potassium. Always ask your doctor. I love this. Carissa says, take the added supplement course. Thank yeah, you, Carissa. A, with our coaching program. Carissa's is. a coach. Carissa's yes. a coach. Check if you need out. a coach, check her out. And yes, Autumn, right here. Autumn says, yes. The coaching course is incredible. Even after following the Emmerich's close, keto closely for a few years, I was able to learn so much more, and I feel very confident in helping others now. So you guys need coaches? Check out Autumn. And what was the other girl's name? I forgot. Uh, uh, Carissa. Carissa. So uh, can you explain the myth that your body will go into starvation mode if you don't eat enough and will store fat? Uh, yeah, we have a post on it. I'll put the post below that explains it in detail with, with like, um, studies, studies and everything linked in there to, to explain there's something called metabolic adaptation, which is different than starvation mode that can down regulate a little bit, but it's not this starvation mode. The idea of it is no matter what you're going to store fat. Well, guess what? You know, the potato famine uh, in Ireland Nobody would have gotten skinny if that was real. I mean, just think about, you know, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, let's see. Even after following, oh, you were, uh, yeah, sorry. I'm trying to find one. Monk fruit, erythritol combination, okay. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, let's see. Fully reversed my diabetes from t A1C of 10.7 to 5.1 using keto in Way only 90 go, days. Way to go, Wow, Jen. in three months. That's a three-month test. That's amazing. If you want to, I would love to have that testimony, Jen. That's that's awesome. If you want to send it to support at keto adaptedcom I would be Thank very you, Jen. Appreciative. I'm so proud of you. Uh, let's see. Does wearing CGM. a CGM help with realizing metabolic flux? You know what? I wore a CGM. Uh, my son did too, and they're a bit skewed because I would. They asked you to register when you would eat and what you'd eat, when you'd exercise, what you did for exercise. And so I was always registering it. And it was giving me numbers that were a little off on my end. And so you know what? I stopped telling him when I'd eat. I stopped telling him when I'd exercise. And it stayed like this. And we did it with my son. And the same thing happened. So because they're watching you those people that well it's they do a lot of predictive algorithms based on number because they're not directly measuring it in your blood they're measuring it you know intercellular and so it's not as accurate no uh so you know the, i look at them as especially the libra one is not real accurate the the dexcom is much better but even then you know those are pretty expensive uh let's see any flavored drinks you could recommend on carnivore um, well, any flavoring wouldn't be technically carnivore, but we have plenty of flavors in our house. We love the element. My kids love the raspberry element, the orange salt. Um, they love the chocolate one. Um, we have a great hot chocolate recipe using that element. Um, there's so many different, like, be careful which one you buy, but they like that one. Started your program two days ago. I've lost five pounds Way already. Awesome. Two days a week, protein sparing. However, I'm experiencing GI issues such as bloating, gurgling, stomach. Uh, occasional diarrhea. I would make sure that you're dairy free. Um, and then I would add in Spectrozyme Panex, or it's like a, a digestive enzyme. And then hydrochloric acid with pepsin would help too. Where do you get quality supplements? Uh, I, I will put a link below to our shopping list that yep. has all of our favorite brands in it. And ones that are on sale. Bacon fat mayo. Love your cookbook <sighs> bundle. Is it a recipe you have published? I think it's, is it the one on the blog or no? bacon fat mayo? I believe it's in, yeah. If you go to Mar the keto maria.com and then go to the blog, um, search bacon A's it's on there. Yep. And what type of potassium potassium citrate is a, mm -hmm. is a good form. We use the now one, uh, should protein macros be based on total body weight or lean body? Does a 300 pound man need 300? So we do it on lean, lean mass. And our calculator that we'll link below uh, accounts for that. That's why you enter your measurements and whatnot so that you we get a try to get a decent. Someone uh, made the protein sparing mass. strawberry shortcake. Yum! Thank you, my friend Tina. Let's see. Uh, losing a lot of hair even with high protein. Not sure why. Um, it could be that you have low blood pressure and you're not getting enough circulation to the head. So adding something like element or soul water or just salt in general 
um, to your water, that will help with that. You could add in some L-tyrosine. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. Best source to start with protein sparing, and how would you cycle this with a low carb high fat diet? Craig made the most perfect meal plans for you, Christopher. Um, can, we'll have the link in the show notes. He did protein sparing modified fast days. So like three days a week, you follow these meal plans. And then the non days, if you follow those meal plans to the T, you will have amazing Great results. results. Hello from, I can't really see that flag size. Uh, started carnivore the beginning. I think it's UK. Yay. Uh, the month I visited the ladies more every day. This is normal, please. Okay. Uh, let's see. I, I visited the ladies more every day. Yeah, is this normal? I don't know what that question is. Yeah. I mean, the loo? Have, the loo, maybe. Uh, you add more salt. More salt will help you uh, not go urinate as much. Uh, what's this one? How about he's having bad psoriasis flare? Uh, oh. Skull. What could help? Uh, I would add a thousand milligrams of borage oil three times a day um, in a capsule form. And again, we'll have the links in the show notes. Um, and then also stay dairy free. What about electrolytes without drinking it? Uh, I hate fruity flavors. Uh, Element has an unflavored. They have an unflavored. And you just add it to water. Just add salt to your water if you want. Um, let's see. Desiccate, desiccated thyroid supplements for support. Thyroid support. Um, I would do a personalized supplement plan. Yeah, there's lots of different things that can help. Um, hot on flashes, me. menopause supplement just started. When uh, when do you expect to see improvements for hot flashes? Uh, also, I get some severe stomach pain for my 5-HTP. So don't do the 5-HTP. Thanks for answering that one. Um, and then I, just email me. We'll talk about it. Yeah, if you have any issues with your supplement plans, just reply to us, reply to your order email, and we can help you tweak them if, if you yeah. So I would add in more of the Progest cream, though, too. Or cite in for Lyme, has it helped? So I actually herks pretty bad when I take it, um, which means you get a lot worse. of pain that goes up, and I have been able to stay on it consistently. Um, but it can be a very good antifungal, uh, and it does help a lot of quite a few people. Uh, uh, I just made your Jello recipe and love your protein pudding in the fridge for a treat today. Thank you, my friend. All right. Does Element break my fast? No. Uh, no. That's, that's not true. That's not true. Especially if you're, if you're fasting for weight loss, there's no issue whatsoever with Element you're, or any sweet. You want to talk about insulin and if you're eating no fat or no? Yeah. I mean, the, the idea that, so for, for again, for weight loss, you know, but having insulin, first of all, we don't believe it doesn't, it doesn't happen. Natural sweeteners spike insulin. The ones we recommend. We've tested them across tons of people. It's diabetics. just sometimes stevia will have additives to it and that's, what's going to cause yeah. the rise. So let's see. Best way to, uh, not feeling well, praying it isn't COVID best way to combine supplement. We have a, a post about immunity mm -hmm. and what things you can do to help. Yeah, and when I'll post that link below here. All these links should be in here within 30 minutes of this being done. Isn't he awesome? Um, Thank you, my friend. Let's see. Just pre-ordered your book. Thank you, Kim. Very much appreciated. Oh, boy. Yeah, a little hard to One of my favorite today. recipes in the Protein Sparing Cookbook uh, is the broiled whitefish. Everyone comes, or every time it comes out perfect. Thank you, Lisa. We're very grateful for your support. Uh, do you recommend reverse dieting or is weekly refeed day sufficient to keep metabolism on us? Yeah, we believe it is, you know, that weekly refeeding, mm -hmm. um, even, uh, you know, depending how long you've done this, even going a few days at maintenance, you know, if you've yep. been doing, if you've been in this weight loss mode for a year, you know, add even a week where you just go to maintenance for a week and then go back. And then, uh, you know, once you get to maintenance, just start increasing your calories until you find your body's set point for uh maintenance so jill asks what program do you recommend honestly our keto vip program is on sale this week and everybody has great success and you get to work with us um for eight weeks right yeah but then you get the program for life so the meal plans and all of that you get for life but all you videos and materials you get a lot of help with us what progest cream do you recommend? Uh, Emerita. 
Yeah, that's in our supplement guide that we'll have below. Let's see, a couple more. Uh, what's the difference between L-carnitine and acetyl L-carnitine? Acetyl L-carnitine is more for brain health, where L-carnitine is more for um, shuttling triglycerides to the mitochondria for weight loss. Let's see, is it better to refeed on higher protein or higher fat? Higher you can't, well, on a refeed day, uh, you, both is good. Either way, um, what, what, what you prefer. Yeah, I, I guess I would, you know, probably do some more fat, especially if you are eating a lower fat level, uh, add more fat because you, you want your body to kind of shake totally. up Lee. from an energy standpoint. So Lee, um, he, we're going through some treatment right now and we might have some really interesting information for getting the line to get calmed down because we have tried, everybody is so very kind and I don't want to cry because we get emails all the time on what to do for his chronic Lyme. And I don't think people realize what we deal with day after day after day. And for almost like a decade now that it's changed his life. It's ruined his life in many ways. And even eating keto and healthy, he is very, very weak. And he, you know, even walking sometimes is very hard for him, but We've had some a doctor work with him this week and some very promising medical stuff. So that he's yeah, trying. so basically, um, you know, Herxing is uh, your body's reaction to getting rid of stuff. You know, it, when you uh, take some of these treatments, it mobilizes the Lyme or mold, whatever it is that's your problem, and it gets it into your circulation, and that causes inflammation and pain. and pain and lots of that's a Herx, Herxheimer reaction and. Uh, the best thing is to go slow with whatever you're doing. You know, if that treatment, you know, for example, the monolaurin, the lorcidin, uh, you know, start out with like one little pellet, you know, a couple times a day, then go to two and slowly increase instead of just doing a scoop three times Don't a day. Push it. Cause that, you know, you, if you get, Going too fast, the, the Herx reaction can be much stronger. And even stronger. like don't do infrared saunas. Yeah. Do more of just like a dry a sauna. A heat. Uh, but the other thing is, so that treatment, it's COVID long haulers is a treatment for COVID long haulers. And there's actually been some really interesting uh, uh, applicability to chronic Lyme as well. And that's the treatment I'm going to start here okay, this cyto week. Cytokines. Uh, calming, calming down the cytokine storm that's there that's causing all the inflammation. And that's the same with chronic Lyme. And that's what I'm going to be trying this week. So I'll stay tuned. We'll be finding out uh, about that. So I have the carnivore cookbook of protein sparing. Thank you. Next you one. Recommend the next one to be complement these two. I would do the art of fat loss for sure. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When you buy our books, if you get them on keto adapted.com and you print the ebook form, if you like printed books, these we make pennies because the publisher takes most of it and Amazon takes most of it. So we're grateful. You know, I, I love that people enjoy those, but if you do our self-published books, that's what actually helps a family. Um, benefits of ancestral supplements and which ones do you yeah. recommend? Yeah, it depends on what you need. But um, we do like the beef organs, which has a couple different things in it. I think it has liver and heart and stuff. Um, the beef brain is great. When I'm working on a project, I really like that. Or if I have someone with depression or anxiety, I like the beef brain. Um I do, gosh, there's so many good ones. If you have issues with, um, you know, urinating all the time, they have a really great, it, it just depends on what you need. But the beef organ one is kind of like an all general one. So here's a little rapid fire. Just made protein experience cinnamon rolls. New favorite. Thank awesome. you. 80% of people who have, think they have Lyme, have mold illness. He's already yeah, been tested I mean, for that. That is, there's definitely a ton of crossover there. Yep. And that can definitely be a And he did mold situation. detox and stuff. Uh, my husband and I have chronic Lyme, getting ready to go carnivore. I'm Kim, sorry. That's terrible. Kim, um, I don't... best of luck to you. Uh, thanks for sharing anything you can regarding long-term effects of Lyme. Yeah. You know what? We're, when We're he planning... goes through the treatment, well, let's do a whole day on just this, on Lyme. We'll do it in... in uh, I'm planning a post, a big post on Lyme in general for our blog. There's, I think some out there already, but this one's going to be kind of hopefully after this treatment to talk about the whole journey and everything that I've tried and all of that. So uh, 
it's going to be an, an interesting post. I've kept a lot of data and stuff that I want to share. Uh, recently, how life changing it is. Uh, prayers for you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Hot topic: exogenous ketones. The answer: uh, No, don't take them. They're gonna um, not. So when you're putting those exogenous ketones in your body, it doesn't let you use your own body fat to make its own ketones. If I'm working with someone with Alzheimer's, dementia, that's one case I would work with them on it, but I don't recommend it for weight loss. I don't recommend it for cancer because you're just giving your body too much fuel at that point. So it doesn't use your own fuel. Why no infrared? So infrared, full spectrum infrared. I like it for me, for my skin and my body, but not for Lyme. So full spectrum infrared tends to uh, activate some of the issues like Lyme more than just the heat. And what I do sauna for is detoxing and that's sweating, you know? And so I, I, if I do it with the full spectrum, I herx bad the next two or three days. You can't and so even walk. I want to do it more regularly to detox. I need to do less of the full spectrum. Um, let's see. see. Yeah, lots of Lyme. Lyme is so common and becoming so much more common. It's really kind of scary, uh, I'll tell you. Uh, let's see. How much vitamin A with beef liver? Can you get too much? Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, but you know, if you stick if, to the, if you're eating like one serving a week, four ounces, I don't think it's any issue whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I don't know anybody who died from, cause what was that joke? Like if you eat a polar bear's liver, you're going to die of, um, iron toxic or vitamin A toxicity. Mm -hmm. And someone said, are you, are you eating a polar bear's liver? And I don't think we have anybody suffering from an overdose of vitamin A. I don't know anybody from eating liver. Uh, let's see. Does collagen break fast? Yeah, probably because mm -hmm. it's protein. Uh, do you have a mold detox blog post? Not yet. Uh, you know, that'll be included in all this information. You know, I'm just trying to, I've been collecting a lot of information and, and stuff because I haven't found what works for me yet. And I kind of want to, I don't want to post and say, here's all this stuff. And yeah, it didn't work. So, you know, I'm kind of waiting for, it works for some people just not. something, you know, with Lyme, it's a complete spectrum of, you know, what works for one person will not work for another. And it's really finding the combination. But what's really interesting about the COVID long haulers is that there's these cytokines that uh, get into this kind of storm or stuck state with Lyme that really applies to. And so, uh, veg, VEGF is one of the cytokines that's really related with Lyme and Bartonella and my VEGF, uh, cytokines, um, the, the, the range is below 12 and I was 105. And so that's, what's out of control and causing all my inflammation. Uh, so I'm hopeful that these, uh, drugs I'll be taking will shut that storm down and allow my not cheap. body to go back to, you know, normal function. Uh, let's see. Peeing a lot. Uh, I would add insult elements. Yeah. Especially if it's at night, you're getting up at night, take a salt capsule or something before mm -hmm. bed. Uh, do you lose toxins? Yeah. Your body stores toxins in your fat cells. And so when you lose body fat, you mobilize those toxins and that, you know, can cause those issues. Thank but you, Danita. Super, super, Danita. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to wrap it up with maybe one more good one here. Uh, let's see. Are you blogging or able to share about you? Yeah, so that's what I'm we talking did about. We've some blog posts in the past. I'll, I'll link below of the posts we do have mm -hmm. uh, on our blog about Lyme. But like I was saying, after this treatment, if I do see the success I'm hoping to see, and we're really hopeful, I, I plan on doing a big full post on it to really share that experience. So we can't thank you enough for everybody coming here and listening to us talk. We're very grateful to be here. Uh, we will be gone next week. We're going to try to celebrate our anniversary. So two weeks, we'll be back again we'll be on back. Sunday. At Craig will be back. I will be speaking in Nebraska. Oh, yeah. So it'll, it'll be just me for I might that be one. back Sunday. I can't remember. I'll be in Nebraska speaking at an event and then San yeah. Diego at an event. So, 
Awesome. Thank you for everybody for your support. Have a great day. Bye everyone.